the nice thing about the pentose phosphate pathway is that there are, are a lot of nice drugs out there that'll allow you to manipulate different reactions in it. Um, so we're very, we're, right now we have shown that if you amp up pentose phosphate pathway activity, that you get this uh, more memory, memory like phenotype, uh, or maybe not memory in this case, maybe it's just more progenitor like. Mm -hmm. um, but we wanted to see, or what we're hoping to look at is, okay, what happens if you like dampen pentose phosphate activity? Will that actually shut down? the PKM2 knockout phenotype we're seeing and push cells more towards a, an effector-like phenotype. The literature on that is a bit confusing. There have been like conflicting reports on that just based on which, which enzyme in the cascade you hit. Like you could either get cells that are more effector-like or less effector-like. So that's kind of a puzzle right now. That's we're hoping to contribute to figuring that out. Um, so that that's one of the things that we're really looking at. Another thing that we're that we're looking at is uh, we uh, we probably, we're going to we're going to submit this work really soon. And when we get rid of PKM two, we see pentose phosphate activity going up. Other groups have shown that if you transiently deplete uh, lactate dehydrogenase, which is one step downstream of uh, pyruvate kinase in glycolysis. You get a similar memory phenotype, but it's a different uh, different compensatory metabolism that shows you get more TCA activity. Um, if you then like one of the like a really great piece of work from uh, Luca Gadanoni and Nick Restifo's group uh, published in 2013 showed that if you block uh, block the first uh, enzyme in glycolysis. You also get a memory-like phenotype, but it's through enhancing fatty acid oxidation. So we're really interested in like, okay, there are three different metabolisms that we've shown can compensate. Uh, uh, if you screw around with glycolysis, that will result in memory. So how much is the effect of dampening glycolysis versus the enhancing the activity each of each of these other cascades? Um, which is something that I'm, pers I'm personally really interested in. Um, the I, as a, your other question was the clinical utility of this. Um, so we're we're in the process of uh, we're collaborating with this uh, group uh, in the same institution, the Englander Institute for Precision Medicine. Um, there's they're putting together this really nice. Um, in a uh, human patient derived tumor organoid platform where we're all like through our collaboration, we've also tried to uh, implement an immune component to that. Um, it's based off some, some classical work from like Hans Kleber's group and such like that. Uh, so we're, we're getting together a batch of, or a bunch of human derived uh, tumor organoids and matched uh, expanded peripheral blood mononuclear cells, as well as TILs. And so we're gonna uh, we're doing uh, studies in there trying to test like if you can manipulate the T cell functionality to get better killing of these organoids and everything like that. So you can kind of uh, model these interactions and the effects of uh, targeting different mechanisms in a patient specific fashion. So that that's pretty cool. Another. Um, and uh, we we are going to we're going to test pentose phosphate agonism in there a little bit. Um, the it's pretty tricky though because uh, you know you don't have a model antigen and uh, and a and a transgenic mouse to model it. So you you've got a much more heterogeneous response that's going on, and it changes patient to patient. So there's a lot of optimization that has to be done in that system. Um, but I, I think it's pretty promising. Some of the preliminary data we've we've got out there isn't quite ready for prime time yet, it, but it looks really good, and, and we're definitely pursuing that. Um, the other the other thing that that we were thinking about is uh, in terms of like an adoptive cell transfer context for for patients, where you would take their own uh, take their own peripheral blood. Or, for their own tills and pretreat them with a pentose phosphate agonist, um, which would uh, you would get the you would get the uh, 
the proliferation and expansion of the effector cells and everything like that through the uh, through the classic rapid expansion process that they use. But by throwing on the pentose phosphate agonism, you might get this the T cells to skew a little bit more towards maybe a more progenitor like component. So then they would go in and they'd be able to amplify even more, um, which is one of the mechanisms that we think is happening with, uh, and it could combine with checkpoint blockade that way too. So we're pretty excited about both these angles.